Good morning, another expert breakfast, and I seem to be the expert this day again. I'm already getting used to this environment over here, and today I brought to you a topic that is new for you, for sure. It is about the evolution of leadership. It is about the concept of leadership. Even leadership trainers, you can ask sometimes, what is leadership? And they give you some bullshit answers. So, what is leadership in its essence? After these 30 minutes, you will know. You will know whether you're a leader or not, and you will know whether your superior is a real leader or not, whether somebody's bluffing or not. So, let's start into it. If you want to understand a notion or a concept, the best thing is to go at its beginnings, to go at its roots in terms of etymology, 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 or also in terms of history. And so we go back. We go back in time and look at leadership. Homo sapiens occurs like 300,000, 200,000 years uh, ago. And what's the difference to all other beings? It's the sapiens. What the sapiens means mean it means sapere in italy in italy or saber in spanish knowing it means you know the knowing man is homo sapiens and what does the man or woman know in contrast to other beings it knows about its own existence so it is self conscious you know that you exist. I know that I exist. And what is implemented into this information? A very crucial point. If you know that you exist today, you know that one day you are going to... Yes, you're going to die and be polvo, dust. And what does this knowledge make with ourselves? That we know that we are going to die. We start to plan our lives. This is what's happening. And now we go at the beginning of Homo sapiens. Let's go back 100,000 years BC. How do we live together? How big are the groups, do you guess? Rather small, about 10 people, 12 people. Why are the groups still so small? Because we didn't settle down yet. We are walking around, we are nomads. And what happens if a group doesn't have a home, is walking around all the time, migrating? That means that there's all the time natural selection. That means sick people die, old people die, people who can walk die. And what stays is a core of super fit Darwinistic people. So, 12 people, 10 people. Who's the leader within these 12 people? It's always the same person until today. It is the person who has most benefit for the group. It is the person who has most benefit for the group. And at that time, the person who has most benefit for the group was the strongest, of course. It was mostly a man, I guess, but probably steered by a woman behind. Who knows? But it was a man by this time. So what did he get for his leadership? Because you get something for it. You get something for it today, and you get something for it by then. First choice of meat, first choice of mate. First choice of meat, first choice of mate. You can choose the piece of meat you want, and probably you can choose your mate as well to procreate, genetically improving into the next generation. And now I ask yourself, what do you get for, sh uh, for leadership today? It's not too different. It's status and money. What is status and money? It's freedom of choice. You become more attractive through status, through money. You can get the mate that normally you wouldn't get because you're too ugly. <laughs> Suddenly you get a beautiful woman or beautiful man because you're successful and you really you spread this aura of a winner. First choice of mate, first choice of meat is what you get for it, but nada por nada. Nothing for nothing. Normally I would be in Colombia right now and doing these kidnapping trainings. Corona makes me stay here. I'm happy. Nada por nada. So you get the first choice of meat, you get the first choice of mate. What do you have to give? 
Imagine the situation that the group is attacked. Where do you need as a leader to stand? Where do you need to stand as a leader? First row. First row. What you have to give back then as today is courage. Is courage. Everybody's afraid when there is a ta an attack. But you react as a leader differently to fear than others. Normally, people react to fear like freeze and flight. But you as a leader, you react smart. You say, what is necessary to protect the group? What is necessary in my behavior as a role model that the group is strengthened? So you stand first row. You are courageous. First part of leadership, and a lot of people cheat on this already, you are not a coward. Just a second, what is courage? Fear is an incremental part of courage. So you need to be afraid, otherwise you cannot be courageous. That means everybody in the group feels the fear, but the leader reacts differently to the fear. He, she feels the fear as well, but decides to confront it and do the right thing and not the easy thing. The easy thing is run away, freeze, point on others to do something. The right way is to think, okay, what does the group need now? I need to stand first row, and so I will do. And now let's talk about the first feedback instruments in the world. Let's say we had a bluffer leader, like nepotism some cousin of a rich guy who became the leader. Just kidding. You, you have somebody who is not worth it. So there comes an attack, and the guy stays in the cave making love to his mate and leaves the group alone. Let's say the group survives the attack. What did they do to the leader, leader afterwards? They killed him publicly. They killed him publicly. This is feedback. This is a feedback system, isn't it? You didn't deliver, you, you take the best mate, you take the best piece of meat, but you don't deliver, we kill you. This is a feedback instrument. So everybody else in the group learned, hmm, nada por nada. Of course it's great to get the best mate and the best meat, but it comes with a cost. And then everybody thinks, do I really want to pay this cost? Do I really want to take the leadership position or not? Nada por nada, nothing for nothing. Let's travel to the future. 90,000 years into the future from 100,000 BC. We are now 10,000 BC. What happens with the groups of human beings, Homo sapiens? The groups grow. Why do they grow? Because we settle down. That means we start to farm and the groups, suddenly the old ones and the sick ones can survive. There is not a too tough natural selection anymore. Who becomes the leader now? 100, 120 people. Who becomes the leader now? It's not the strongest anymore. Probably it's the best relationship builder and a smart guy who knows how to steer people. A very good relationship builder for sure, meaning he knows the names of people, he knows what people want, and most importantly, people trust him. Trust back then, as today, is the oil in the machinery of leadership. How does he create trust? He walks around, he talks to people, he listens to people, and the strong people went into the second row. They became the arms, while the new leader is the brain. But how do 150 people know whether they can trust this guy or not? And now I'm quoting, of course, the master himself, Yuval Harari, Homo sapiens. Please read the book if you, don't, if you didn't read it yet. How did they know whether they can trust this guy or not? Because with 150 people, you cannot talk to this, to this guy on a daily basis. Gossip. Gossip is the answer. The origin of gossip is an instrument to, to know whether you can trust somebody you don't know directly too well. Meaning, let's say, Julia is the boss here. Yeah? And I want to know whether I can trust her or not. But I just can see her once in a week walking by saying, Hi, Sebastian, and I have no intimate talk to her. How can I know whether I trust her? I ask 10 people who deal with her, how is Julia gossiping? We talk about other people. And if 10 people I trust who know Julia tell me that Julia is okay, 
then I will say, okay, I don't need to know her personally. I trust her leadership as well. The aim of trust, there are two reasons for gossip. The first one is to know whom you can trust. And now ask yourself for a second, how much of your speaking time, interaction time, do you talk about other people? It didn't change too much. It will be around 60 to 90 percent, depending how much you do gossip. And what is the aim of gossip? All the time to create trust, to know whom to trust and whom to distrust. In companies, think about yourself. You talk about your bosses all the time and every little story will be told and there it is where trust is built. In the coffee kitchen, of course, the trust is built while you behave correctly or not, but it's spread in the coffee kitchen. So the guy, you know whether to trust the guy or not by gossip. The second reason for gossip, by the way, is to talk about things that are abstract. Things that you cannot see, touch. You can talk about the lion is, as the, the lion is over there 100 meters to the left, watch at the tree and over there he is. This is another reason for gossiping and language itself. Now we travel to the now, 2021 years after Christ. Corporates have been growing. Groups have been growing. Let's take Amazon. Amazon has about 600,000 employees. Nestle, 330,000 employees. How do you lead this number of groups? Very simple. You start to create one thing that's very difficult, but this makes a difference. How do you lead 600,000 people? How do you lead them? Common beliefs is the answer. Common beliefs, meaning you create something they all believe in. And now I want to ask you, what are common beliefs, what we think is real but actually is not real? It's just working because we all commonly believe in it. We use it every day. Think a second. Money. Money doesn't exist. Of course, the bill exists, but the value of money is just built by the common belief in a system. So if the world stops to believe in a country or system, what happens with the value of money? It decreases instantly, called hyperinflation. So what happens if, for instance, the, st the world stops to be believe in Venezuela? The Bolivar hyperinflates completely. No value at all. And we are a lot in Medellin. In Medellin, you have all the Venezuelan fugitives and they're standing at the gas station and they sell you like packs of Bolivar, millions of Bolivares, and they tell you, give me anything for it. The money is not even worth the paper it's printed on. Money doesn't exist. The value of money is just the common belief of the world, the collective belief of the world in a region or country. As long as the world believes in the United States, dollar goes up in the future. As long as the world believes in the European Union, euro goes up. And if the world stops believing, it goes down. Why is Bitcoin going up right now? Because the world is becoming, becoming more and more insecure and people think the things that have been certain before are maybe becoming uncertain. And you need a finite good to believe in. Bitcoin is one. Gold is another one, of course. So. Once again, common beliefs, to create common beliefs. What else is a common belief and actually does not exist? Countries, my friends, countries and borders, they do not exist. How did a country develop, arise out of nothing? There was a guy or a girl and she was drawing a line and said, left of this line is Sebastian land, right of the li line is your land. And then, to make this line real, an entire collective had to believe into this line and say, yes, I do believe in Sebastian land and the other land, and I believe in the line, and the country was born. Countries do not exist. If you were born in Austria, Vienna, 1910, you lived in three different countries. You lived in the First Republic, you li lived in the Deutsches Reich, and you lived in the Second Republic. Once Trieste was a part of your country, once you have been in a monarchy, one be once Berlin was your capital, 
and now it's Vienna. Believe me, countries change as common beliefs change. And what is the leader doing? And now I want to show you, because there is a lot of things that do not exist, even though we think they exist. And there's another thing, it's corporates. Corporates do not exist. And paradoxically, corporates comes from the Latin word corpus. Corpus is the body, cuerpo, el cuerpo. And what, they, what don't corporates have? A body. Corporates just are just on a piece of paper signed by a notary that we need to believe in, that represent a legal system we need to believe in. And suddenly this corporate or this LTD can open an own bank account that we have to believe in to pay money or receive money that we need to believe in. This is how the system works. There are 100,000 things that do not exist. And you will see it suddenly 100 euro is nothing. And don't be surprised. It's already nothing. It's just a representation of common belief. And what do great leaders do? They create common beliefs. Creatio ex nihilo. If I had a flip chart, I would write it down now. Creatio ex nihilo. It's Latin. I had uh, a lot of Latin at school. Creatio ex nihilo means create something out of nothing. This is what real leadership is. How did Amazon occur? How did Immofinance come up? How did any company, how was every company born? At the very beginning, there was one nuts, one guy who was nuts. And he said, or she said, I do believe in this company. And then there were another, some other people following and said, I do believe in this company as well. Then they founded it. Legally, it was founded. Then they had to convince clients that it exists, that they pay money to this company that you believed in and created out of nothing. And suddenly, Amazon is a reality. Suddenly, Immofinance is a reality. Suddenly, my LTD is a reality. But you have to make people believe in it. And what do you need at the very beginning? At the very beginning, you are alone. And here's the second point about leadership. The first one is courage. If you feel fear, you choose courage over, over cowardness. Now comes the second one, to create reality. You are alone. You need to be comfortable not being affiliated to a group. Because at the very beginning, when I said, I, w I can say fuck and ass in my speeches. Everybody told me I was working for a company who is still here in the Wienerberg city. They said, Sebastian, you cannot say this. This is not consultant language. And then I separated from them. And everybody told me, you can't say it. And I kept on saying it, vulgar language sometimes. Because it's more effective. And it is sometimes shit. And when it's shit, I call it shit. And then we started to found our own company. And I started to believe in it so strongly until today, 20 people are with me in the team who believe in it and a big number of clients worldwide do as well. But at the first point, I needed to stand alone while people pointed at me, Sebastian, you cannot do this. This doesn't work that way. And I had to say, I think, yes. And who else believes? Nobody. I'm alone. I believe in it alone. And I created a new reality, and this reality became a company. This company attracted clients, and these clients spread realities. This is what great leaders do. They bear the loneliness. They bear the solitude. Because at the very beginning, you are alone, especially when you want to do change processes. That is a big topic at the moment. If you want to change something, meaning you want to break rules. That means at the very beginning, you will be alone doing something differently in a changed way. And what is the common reaction of the peer if you do something differently than before if you break a rule? It's exclusion. They exclude you at the beginning. And you need to deal with this exclusion, not with the natural urge to belong again. That means, okay, forget about the new rules, forget about the change, I want to belong, let's have fun, make a joke. No. You have to stand there lonely and believe in it so strongly that this change will happen. And the, at the beginning, you will be alone until there will be the second follower or the first follower and then the second follower. And suddenly, it will become a, a new reality 
change is happening, a company is happening, a new reality is born. This is what great leaders do. They create realities. This is how you lead a big number of people. And I want to give you another big reality, religion, leading billions of people, some of them into death, giving them hope, giving them everything. What is it? A common belief. A common belief. So create beliefs and make them common. This is what you can really see about leadership. So first point, what do leaders do? They choose courage over cowardness. Second point, they can stand the loneliness. Especially when you're in a leadership position, there will be loneliness a lot. Because who can you really share your worries with? Not too many people, because you're a role model. Role model means if you are worried and the people see that the boss is worried already, then they will get worried. And you have to all the time live the emotion you want to be mirrored in your company. That means you become lonely. You cannot shout about the management or talk bad about the management in the coffee kitchen. This is not possible anymore. Because if you talk shit about the management, of course, they think, okay, in this company, it's absolutely okay to do this. So your behavior is a role model for the behavior of the rest. And the third point, wait a second, I got loneliness, I got courage. The third one I forgot now, but I will bluff over it. Oh, uh, it will come for sure. So the, the thing is, how do you choose courage over cowardness. The first thing is you admit that there is fear arising. Also you admit that you feel also your heart rate going up and then uh, you choose consciously, even though your intuition tells you to fly, uh, to, to flight, you choose to confront yourself. Now I got the third one. <laughs> Did you see how well I bluffed? Word flew in about it. The third one is you always put the benefit of the collective over your individual benefit. Leadership is something given to you with privileges. And these privileges you just deserve if you put the benefit of the group over your individual benefit. And there's a very simple sentence to simplify it. The sentence is business over ego. Business over ego. Because this is really the, the threshold between good and bad leaders. Do you take decisions that are for yourself? Or do you take decisions that are good for business? And the higher you get in the hierarchy, the more you are morally obliged to take the collective more importantly than yourself, to take decisions to the corporate, to the business, and not for yourself. So the three points are collective over collective over individual interest, business over ego. Second one, courage over cowardness. And the third one, loneliness instead of affiliation. These three criteria you can use to really challenge leaders, and I ask you to challenge them. And I want to give you another thing, because in good times, you don't need good leaders. In good th times, a good leader is not even showing up, because he manages everything and everything is running. Where you need, need good leaders is when the shit hits the fan, when there are problems coming, conflicts, crisis. Then you see which quality of leadership do you have in your corporate. And if somebody makes 100K, 200K, 300, 500, a million a year, Challenge these people, nada por nada. There is nothing for nothing. Challenge them. Ask them, you need to take a decision on this. There is a conflict in the team, help us solve it. I'm not feeling any motivation anymore, help me. And so on. And they need to deliver, put them into their obligation. And then you will help that they're just leaders in positions of leadership who really deserve it and not bluffers. Because the moment you have a bluffer in there, it really destroys your system. I want to give you the sentence that th why they destroy the system. The, the sentence why they destroy the system is, first class people choose first class people. Second class people 
choose third class people. First class people choose first class people because they're not afraid. I know I'm good. I take the best I'm finding on the market. Even if you're better, I want to learn from you because I know I can do it. First class people choose first class people. Second class people choose third class people. And it has nothing to do with social class. It's about the quality of your leadership class. Second class people choose third class people. Why do second class people choose third class people? Very simple. Because they don't want to be uncovered. They don't, they don't want that the world sees that they're just second class people, so they hire people who are on purpose worse than, them, than themselves. And through being worse than themselves, they deteriorate the quality in the entire corporate. Because these people, of course, hire fourth, fifth, sixth class people. And suddenly nobody wants to be uh, undisguised, uncovered anymore as being not good. And suddenly you have the virus in the entire organization. Good leadership is far more important. For this reason, good leadership is so important. Because if you put a wrong leader who selects the wrong people, it's like a virus in your organization. So, I summarize again. Three basic qualities about leadership. The first thing is, you put the collective over your individual interest. This is really important. You're not an ego person. You always take decisions that are good for the business, good for the organization, good for the collective. Business over ego. Business over ego. Second thing, they can bear the loneliness. That means they can stand alone and take uncomfortable decisions and start complete new realities by this. And third, most importantly, because this is the third point I see mostly broken, they are courageous. They choose courage over cowardice. That means fear comes in, uncomfortable situations, conflicts, crises hit, and they choose to tackle them instead of run away from him because they are role models. So this, is, this was my talk about leadership. I'm fine. Two minutes. Yeah. I'm fine. And I want to give you again the sentence that brings you into courage. The situation is not good. The situation is not bad. It is as it is. It is your coach. This is one of the quickest ways how you come into courage if you're a leader. The situation is not good. The situation is not bad. It is as it is. It is your coach. And suddenly you approach to uncomfortable situations instead of running away. So you look for your coaches. Be courageous. Be brave. Thank you very much.